Hello, this is Steven Nojiri and this is another Tata Genji Tradition video. In this video we're going to discuss the deities of the Jingunden, the deities of the Oboshiden. Now this is a fairly complex topic, but for this video we will just we will look at a simplified and streamlined overview of the deities of the system. So, but to begin, we need to remember two important details. First, the deities are Buddhist and Shinto. This system developed over a period of time where these two religions were unified into a two-step ideology. Shinto and Buddhism helped each other. Within this two-step ideology, the simple premise is that Shinto represents the worldly aspects of divine energy and Buddhism represents the enlightened aspects. Another way to view it is that Shinto prepares the individual to be spiritually cleansed or purified and prepared to be able to then correctly practice Buddhism. There's a couple of different ways to explain, but it's a two-step process. It, Shinto being the minor and Buddhism being the major. Point number two. Modern day Buddhism in Shinto in Japan are not really good sources to understand this doctrine. There's been too much change. As many of you may be aware, the Meiji Restoration saw the forceful splitting of Shinto and Buddhism, and it just really changed both religions in Japan. So using modern-day Shinto and modern-day Buddhism of Japan won't really give you a good idea of what to actually expect. The first deity that we will look at is Amaterasu Okami, the sun goddess. Now she's not the most ancient or powerful Shinto deity, but she is the most central, most important Shinto deity. She is effectively the deity of the imperial family. The imperial family, the emperors, are her semi-divine offspring and they rule Japan in her place. The Jingunden and Oboshiden essentially starts with Jimu Tenno or Emperor Jimu, which means it starts with this goddess. Furthermore, the Genji are descended from imperial lines, meaning the junior or the minor lines that cannot ascend the throne. As such, the Genji are sworn to protect the emperor as Bushi, but also as distant relatives to the emperor, and thus a distant relatives to the sun goddess. Now, other samurai clans, such as the Fujiwara, are also descended from gods that assisted the sun goddess, and this is where the original court noble and bushi houses come from, from those families descended from the deities that helped the sun goddess. We'll look into that just a little bit more in the video. Hachiman Daibosatsu. Now, he, this deity is a bodhisattva and a dharma protector. He essentially defends the emperor so long as Japan is a Buddhist country. Hachiman is also the Ujigami, the clan god of the Genji. I did create, I do have a two-part video series called Visions of Hachiman Daibosatsu, which I encourage you to watch for more information about this deity. Other Jingunden deities would be the Kasuga Shrine deities, the main deity from this list. So the Kasuga Shrine deities is a collection of deities, but the main deity from this list is Ame no Koyane. This deity is the one who guards the sacred mirror and attends to Amaterasu Okami. It was Ame no Koyane who recited the sacred chants and songs to help bring the sun goddess out when she was hiding in the cave. This deity is also the ancestor of the Nakatomi family, which gives rise to the Fujiwara family. And this is why the Fujiwara serve as court nobles and assistants to the emperor, because of the relationship between the sun goddess and Ame no Koyane. This is a deity that is the assistant and that manages the imperial palace. In so many ways, this deity is the sun goddess's personal uh, secretary, for lack of a better word. And a very important set of deities for the Jinkunden and the Oboshiden are the three goddesses. These three goddesses are deities related specifically to Emperor Jimu and his military campaign to build the empire. They are three female goddess well there are three the, the goddesses three female goddesses assigned to the emperor by the sun goddess they are known as the three goddesses of munakata because they are now enshrined at the three shrines of the munakata shrine complex 
It is said that they were born from the sun goddess when she received a sacred sword from Susano. So they're seen as being the offspring of both Amaterasu and Susano. There was actually a, a ritual that they did, a kind of a sacred rite, and part of that sacred rite was, involved him giving her a sword, and then when, she, when he handed her the sword, these three goddesses are said to have manifested or to spontaneously come into existence, you know, to be birthed from her. So um, they, these three goddesses are also associated with navigation, and there's this interesting sort of um, association with fishermen of the, or of the area around the Murakata Shrine. Now, look at the Golden Star. These are very important deities of the Jingundin. These three goddesses are essentially the some of the main deities of the Jingundin, specifically assigned to the emperor. So they are assigned to the emperor to protect the emperor and to help him in military campaigns. Therefore, they become central deities of the Jingundin. Now let's address this now. It almost goes without needing to be said that Buddhas and Bodhisattvas play an important part in the esoteric aspects of the teachings. For example, Amiden Yorai, or Amitabha Buddha, plays a significant role, as would be expected, and as does Yakushin Yorai, Shakyamuni Buddha, various Bodhisattvas, Manjushri, Avalokiteshvara, etc., etc. So Buddhas and Bodhisattvas absolutely play into these teachings, esoteric aspects as well. As we discussed in a previous video, the appearance of star deities is important in these teachings as well. In essence, all of the star deities play a role in the various parts of the Oboshiden that utilizes div divination. Uh, and the Jingundin's more esoteric teachings, mirroring Buddhism's esoteric teachings, also include the star deities. And they did teach that the star deities reside in one's head or in one's brain. Um, not as external gods, but more in internal gods or internal energies. Uh, as I also meant present in, presented in a previous video, the main sets of the deities are found with the 28 goddesses of the 28 constellations and the Big Dipper deities. And um, also, you know, as the Big Dipper relates to the army and the warrior aspects of the Jinkundin or Oboshiden. We also find the Sumiyoshi Sanjin, or the three deities of the, uh, the Sumiyoshi Shrine, right? We discussed this. This actually pops up in the Hachiman video. So these are the deities of the Orion Belt constellation. They are also deities of navigation, very similar to the three goddesses we just mentioned earlier. They are deities that, these are the deities that appear to Emperor Shingu and foretold of Emperor Ojin's birth. They, these are the deities, these deities are located in the Setsu area and they're connected to the Setsu Genji, which means the Tara Genji and they're associated with the Kawachi Genji. Now let's take a minute to look at the concept of the God of War. Oftentimes people will quote, you can find this quoted in many places as the God of War is Hachiman, but this is not actually, this is not what the teachings say. The God of War is not Hachiman Daibosatsu. The texts are very clear on this topic. Hachiman Daibosatsu is the God of the Bushi, not war itself. He's more specifically the god of the Genji. So this is a very clear distinction. He's the deity of the samurai, particularly the Genji. He's not the deity of warfare. The, even though samurai do warfare, there's a clear distinction between being the god of the person, the people, versus the god of the activity. The deity who is closest to being the god of war would be the god of the army. And the god of the army is Onomuchi no Kami, also known as uh, Okininushi, the god of the Izumo shrine. So this deity is the actual god of the army or the god of war. And this deity is actually said to be a worldly manifestation of the Buddhist deity, Mahakala. Some other key figures are Prince Shotoku. The belief 
that the prince was a bodhisattva is continued in the Jingunden and the Oboshiden. He represents the harmonious blending of Buddhism and Shinto, with Shinto being that first step to Buddhism. His role is key and central in the Shotoku Jingunden, because the Shotoku Jingunden is based around him. But he even appears in the other systems, the Tata Jingunden, the Tachibana Jingunden. He still appears as a relatively important figure. Another important figure is Emperor Jimu, the first emperor of Japan, the one who has the military campaign to establish the empire. So Emperor Jimu, very important figure in the Jingunden. Also important is Ninigi no Mikoto, which is, this is actually the grandson of Amaterasu Okami, so the sun goddess's grandson, who left the heavens and transitioned into mortality on earth. So started as a god, gave up mortality, be, went from being divine to semi-divine to being able to die, came to earth, lived on earth, and had human offspring. But when leaving heaven was given the three sacred regalia, the three imperial regalia, this is who Emperor Jimu is descended from. So this particular figure is the one who sort of leaves div, leaves being a full deity in the heavens, comes to earth, and creates this sort of human, from this deity's actions comes the human line of emperors, which would be Emperor Jimu being the first one. Now it's important to understand the difference between historical facts and beliefs. Many modern historians believe and will teach and say, for example, that Emperor Jimu never existed, that he's just a story made up of, a, of to explain several different events into a single narrative. In other words, lots of little historical events amalgamated into one fictional character. Now, if whether this is true or not, it doesn't change the religious, cultural, or symbolic meaning of the belief of Emperor Jimu and the impact of that belief on the samurai who follow the teachings. Emperor Jimu, regardless if he was real or not, still serves as an important embodiment of the teachings. The samurai from the Bushi from 900 AD to 1800 AD, the rough general timeline of this beliefs of this belief system, they don't need Emperor Jimu to be real. They just need the lessons to exist so that they can practice these lessons and practice these teachings. And with that, we will bring this video to a close. It's been a very brief and surface level overview of the main deities that appear in the Jingunden and the Oboshiden teachings. The teachings do contain other important figures and deities and spirits, but those will be addressed in future videos when those topics come up. For now, the viewer is encouraged to rewatch the video and to be inspired to investigate and learn more about these deities and these figures that were presented in the video. Remember, modern day beliefs may or may not match the beliefs of the Jingunden and the Oboshiden. Modern Japan, Buddhism and Shinto are split, but in the Genji tradition, Shinto is a worldly aspect of Buddhism's higher teachings. And that is it for this video. As always, um, these videos are meant to be brief and they are meant to be to inspire you or to give you a starting off point. The material in this video is copywritten by me. So please do not steal this material. Please do not take it. Please do not copy it. Again, it, I hope it inspires you. I hope that it sets you off on your own investigations and explorations. But please be respectful.